Hello, I'm Bill LeMay, and thank you for watching Community Matters. We hope you'll continue to watch as we discuss issues facing our community and provide you with the resources and information needed to find solutions. Welcome to Community Matters. Today we're discussing art therapy, which uses the creative process of making art to improve a person's physical, mental, and emotional well-being. We're joined by Hilary Rubison, PhD, the Executive Director and Expressive Arts Therapist at the North Carolina Art Therapy Institute in Carboro. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, that's the first time I think I've said this, but I know absolutely nothing about this. <laughs> but I'm excited to learn. Uh, so good. if you don't I mind. I know a little, so I'll try to help. I think you do. Uh, we can start with the basics. Sure. Art therapy, what is that? So art therapy is a psychotherapeutic field where um, master's level clinicians are trained to incorporate the arts into mental health counseling, both to evoke healing and you know help people um, deal with various issues in their life. It's different depending on the clients that we're working with, whether we're working with an individual client or a group of clients, what their diagnoses are or their backgrounds, but basically, um, we use various arts materials, choosing them uh, for different reasons, which I can talk more about later, to help clients express themselves, um, you know, communicate in ways that maybe are nonverbal if um, talk therapy isn't working for them in different ways, and really just using the arts to explore different situations in their life, working with the arts um, to change those situations and then reintegrate them to heal. Oh, that's neat. So, yeah. for those who have a tough time maybe just sitting down and talking with a therapist, Yes, for instance. Definitely. And as a therapist, you get more out of it because are you seeing things that you would never get in a in a session where you're asking them to, to kind of share their feelings. Yeah. I, so can you give me an example yeah, of that? Yeah, definitely. So we work with a lot of clients that verbal psychotherapy wouldn't actually work for them. So um, for instance, we work with a lot of refugees and immigrants who are newcomers just coming over to the country. So they don't know English and talking with um, a verbal psychotherapist without an interpreter present just isn't a possibility. So using the arts, which are really, uh, you know, a universal language that they might have made art in their home countries or feel comfortable with that, um, it's a really great way to help people express themselves. And also people who are experiencing trauma, um, trauma, you know, lives in the body and it's stored in our brain in visual images. So sometimes talking about it and just talking over and over, it doesn't get to the issue. But if you're able to draw about it, you know, also in a visual way, um, you're able to communicate about the trauma more. And alongside, you know, people like refugees and immigrants, we also work with um, elders who have dementia or Alzheimer's. So verbal, you know, talking just isn't really an option or um, children with exceptional needs um, who have different, um, you know, disabilities or different abilities and, you know, they aren't able to communicate verbally. So I think it's really great for people who verbal psychotherapy just isn't an option. And also it's great for people who, you know, can communicate verbally, but maybe just want to explore things in different ways. I know when I uh, sometimes talk with people, I might talk in circles and never really get to an issue, but when you address things in different ways, really surprising things can come up. So can you tell me, how would it work, for instance? Yeah. I have issues. Okay. okay I have, we all do. We all we do. All do. We do. So um, do, do you kind of direct the, uh, the art project, for instance, in the hopes of uncovering some of these mysteries? Yeah. So, so explain that. Yeah. And that, again, is it's really different um, for each client. But let's say you came in to talk with me. I won't go into your various issues. We won't do okay. that here. We've been here for a long time. So. <laughs> um, but what I might do is if you come in as an individual client and you say, Hillary, um, I know exactly what's going on with my life. Um, I'm having issues with this and I really want to draw about that topic or paint something or use clay or weaving, whatever it is, then I'll say, you know what, you go for that. And I'm gonna sit here and sort of hold the space and be present um, and ask you questions about that particular topic. So it's really guided by the client. Okay. But if you come in and you say, you know, I'm not really sure what I need. I know I'm having some issues. Can you help? Um, I might start with a more directed approach. Like I might say, sure. I'm like, why don't we um, 
you know, take a small piece of paper so it's not that overwhelming. You know, I won't be like, let's make a giant canvas on the wall at first. Um, I might give you a small piece of paper and maybe some colored pencils, which is, you know, a containing thing or let you do a collage um, in case you're like, I don't know how to draw. We could use a magazine and I might say, can you pick out images or draw images of something going well in your life and something that um, maybe is not going so well. And then by starting with those images, I'm able to help you process the things that aren't going well and also make sure that we're looking at your strengths as well, which is a really important part of the therapeutic process. So I think it depends on the client, whether they know exactly where they want to start or if I as the therapist want to guide them into a certain topic. For me, yeah. this topic's new. Okay, yes. But I'm sure this has been around a while. And I, I got to ask, how long has art therapy been around? So art therapy has been around for, you know, over 100 years. Um, I think it began, um, you know, uh, sort of to deal with PTSD, um, with soldiers coming back from different wars and maybe not able to express themselves about the visual imagery they saw. Also in different um, psychiatric hospitals with patients, um, they found that we're either drawing or allowing patients to um, draw their feelings or draw what was going on inside of their head really allowed people to to see into their world. Um, that's art therapy. Uh, the field's been around for a while. I also studied um, uh, music therapy, dance and drama therapy all together um, as an expressive arts therapist. And all those different fields um, have different starting points. But um, sort of in the 70s, they all came together when people um, realized that all of the arts forms together could be healing. And that's sort of what I studied. Uh, so it seems to me what this is is Instead of having the one form of communication where you and I just talk, yeah. you're opening, whether it's dance or whatever it is, in this case it happens to be art, you as a therapist, you're looking for these clues to, un to unlock this mystery. Yeah. Can I ask you this, because we're coming sure. up on a break, oh, and, I, sure. and I know you're, you're gonna yeah. stick around for another segment. What about the art? that uh, actually yeah. created. Now, yeah. I'm probably in the stick figure mode, okay? <laughs> That's okay. That's but but okay. Have, you, have you been surprised at uh, some of the quality of the artwork? Oh, I have been incredibly surprised. Um, we have art shows every month for our clients if they want to share. Um, of course, you know, uh, just like regular therapy, anything we do in a session is confidential, um, including the artwork. But if the clients are really excited to share their stories with the greater community, um, we have art shows and people come in all the time and say, what, these were created by you know different clients? And I said, yes, first and foremost, our clients are artists and that's how we see them. Um, instead of just focusing on a diagnosis or what's going wrong in people's lives, we really try to focus on their identities as artists and the strengths that they bring to the field. So um, I hope anyone could come out to one of our shows. We do them monthly and just see the amazing artwork that's created. Wow. Yeah. Stick around. You stick around, too, because we'll be back with Hillary to discuss how the Art Therapy Institute empowers people through the arts.